Ta-da. Is that mean we're live? We're live now. Or okay, folks, we're live. Um, it is. Okay. Let's see. They can see us. We can't see them. Okay. Hmm? Sorry. They can see us. We can't see them. Okay. Uh, we'll work on that. So, hi everybody. It is Thursday, November seventeenth. Uh, welcome to the HDC. Um, what time is it? Just for the record, one hundred eight. It's one hundred eight on Thursday, November seventeenth. Present, physically present at today's meeting are Val Oliver, Abby Camp, myself, Ray Cole, Stephen Welsh. And Carrie Thornwell. And on Zoom, we have Diane Coons. I believe that's it, right? Yeah. Okay, very good. Um, so can I have a motion to uh approve the move? Thank you, Diane. On uh Diane's motion, Val. Aye. Thank you, Abby. Aye. Very Aye. good. Stephen. Aye. Uh, Diane on your motion. Aye. Thank you. And I'm in favor. Okay, we have an approved agenda. So the first thing, all right, look, look, I should probably just do this for the, for the two people that are sitting in the room that aren't part of the HCC, uh, please mute your phones. And if you want to record any portion, there you go. Okay, so that's done. Now let us move forward to the item number. Oh, by the way, folks, um, I'm hoping I'm hoping that we might be able to review a couple of applications today because we aren't are not meeting next Tuesday, uh, and so as not to get too far behind, I was hoping. But so we will give the the items that are on item number one discussion and vote uh, our attention. However, I would like to keep the conversation as brief as we can while still uh, you know keeping the integrity of what needs to be said. All right, with that, um, why don't we um, move directly to the HDC, um, remind with the acronym OFC. Yeah. Organizational Focus Committee. Correct, thank you. Organizational Focus Committee, best oh, practice please. recommendations, okay? With that, I, I think I'm gonna pass it along to Steven so he can sort of walk us through what the recommendations are. Diane, all of us in the room here have a paper copy, Ho hopefully, you have access to uh, a copy, either uh, paper or digital, to follow along. Um, Stephen, sure, you have the mic. Thank you. Okay, thanks. So this, uh, these works are elements we've discussed uh, in the past, uh, either directly um, at the last meeting, as recently as the last meeting, mm -hmm. and some of them we've kind of discussed and bantered about over the last several years. They all fall under the heading: um, if you're in a hole, stop digging. And we're in a hole and we got to stop digging. Um, we're running business as we have for decades and our workload far eclipses um, the types of meetings we run. Um, I don't, I'm not suggesting it's at anyone's feet or fault. It's just simply we, the reality. It's the reality. So yeah. we're going to, you know, we're proposing these recommendations so we can get a leg up on things. Mm -hmm. Um, one of them was tablets. So that's pretty clear. Um, quick, the initiative is go full digital for more, more effective use of time. I'm not going to read through each of these um, in the interest of time and, and based on the fact that we've talked about uh, these in the past. I'm not going to read through all the details, but the idea is to use the tablets and projectors to make ourselves more effective. Um, in addition to that, there are some requirements, and that, that is that all application materials be submitted digitally via email versus scanned into someone's folder. Mm -hmm. Timely, with pages presented right side up, with drawings and imagery compiled legibly into a PDF format, which is to say, um, not a kind of a um, very low yeah, uh, uh, okay. resolution yeah. or something like that. All right, good. Um, and I wanna add something to that. Yep. Given that it's digital, if, if we do go 100% digital, the one thing that I see as being a potential issue 
is when we have paper copies and we have our little scales, mm -hmm. we can tell immediately whether a door is eight feet tall, nine feet tall, seven feet tall. We can tell whether a ridge is 29 feet tall, 30 feet tall. That's all easy. When we go digital, we're kind of relying on the applicant to have a lot of information that will um, give us an immediate perception of what the scale is so that you know we don't have to take a, a ruler or a scale and place it there. We could have like a bar graph scale or something that gives us accurate information about height and so forth. And they should put it on the plan. Yes. Right, but you can't rely on people to always do all the information. So what if we just yes. have one paper copy at the desk mm -hmm. ready to scale if we need it? Good point. I mean, um, we're not going to not have paper copies. We're still going to need paper copies for the process. Right. So there will always be a paper copy somewhere. That, yeah. And what about exhibit A's, like when we correct it right yeah. on a piece of paper? Uh, and well, Rosary, I can't hear the meeting. Uh, yeah. Sorry, sorry, I thought yeah. I was muted. Nope. Okay. Uh, continue, Stephen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the index, uh, you know, I think we settled on a six foot colored bar on each elevation. On, you know, we can determine what it is and where it is, and it can be on each elevation. And it's part of the application uh, process, including later in the process where we say incomplete applications. Um, exhibit A's we can do with tablets with a Apple Pen digitally. And um, the only concern, Carrie, that I would have about having staff bring over one of each copy, one copy of each application once their drawings is they have to go through before meeting and separate out one of each, and then they need to bring it back and right. collate it into these big carts of files. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest that we would try it, um, specifically at the index bar, what dimension would you like it to be? Six feet tall by one foot wide or a six foot tall person? What This, this what is on want? every uh, page. Every right. elevation, yeah. Because if, you know, if we're scanning back and forth, we want to be able to just reference it and say, okay, it's two of these. Yeah, every um, um, every okay. Uh, well, I only bring it up because I think that that I love the concept okay. going digital for many many reasons. Um, it's just that scaling, we would be relying on the applicant to give us very thorough information about. That. So six foot by one foot wide index on each elevation, and that'll okay. be um, uh, completed completed elevation uh, application checklist. Okay. Okay. So then the idea is um, these are these items are submitted legibly in the PDF format, as I said. Application materials submitted per our established deadline schedule. The submissions loaded loaded to the HCC agenda view pack, which is where we view them online. For normal, nothing changes there. And but a new step is the digital files are verified as accessible. Um, last night there were a couple that were not. You went to a, a page that said not available, and it's huh. it happens. And the, the uh, proposal is simply that it be checked once they're uploaded, so that it would be a staff uh, task. Uh, projector would be used as backup at the meeting uh, for the commissioners and for so long as Zoom meetings continue so applicants and employers can monitor. Mm -hmm. um, the action for you all today is to deliberate to the extent you want to continue, offer any modifications, vote the requirements, and I would suggest that if there's any potential controversy, it would be for a one year trial period. Are we? I mean, we can always change it. It's not like any of these are set in stone. Going digital, using the number. Of can I ask a question when you have a minute? One and second, Diane. Going digital. Yeah. You submit four 24 by 36 okay. four scale sets mm -hmm. and one reduced. Is that going to be reduced for applicants to not have to supply as many set drawings? I. Well, now it, that we're digital, on the we process side, at least. no, I get you. On the process side, there is one for the HCC, one for the building department, and one for that goes back to the, the individual. 
So what I would suggest is for now, just in case we're missing some totally crazy thing, is we would stick with four. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, in a month we're like, why do we have, we don't need all this extra paper. Mm -hmm. We can cut it down to three. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's a really valid question. It used just, to be three. I don't know why yeah. it even went to four. Oh, really? Um, three goes to the applicant and one stays with our file. So technically you, the applicant, keeps two, you can, or one, and you give the other two for the building permit. Right. Oh, that's two. right. Two right. So it gives me three. And you, yeah. You're in charge of your own copy. Yeah, no, it's um, it's four because the building same. department uses a site copy and a file. Two, copy. right. And then HTC uses one. So the extra is for the applicant. Yeah. But the is no one have. has to cart them back and forth. Right. Mm -hmm. And no. a plus. Yeah. I skipped all the plus, putting the fact that we can zoom in and that will help to keep down on the cross ch chatter during the meetings. And yes. um, that will speak to the next topic, which is running a more, you know, as much as people may hate the idea, um, you know, we approach our meeting. Uh, well, first of all, before I get into that, um, yeah. what's the pleasure of the board on this? Well, Diane had a comment. Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. Diane. Go ahead. No, I have a question. When when we're doing this on on the palette or the tablet, uh, whatever uh, you want to call it, and and but we get that on the thing. What happens if somebody? What happens to the people who come to the meeting in in life and want to add something or talk about it or whatever? That Are they that was um, Diane. That's why we would maintain doing the big screen. So they, they yeah. could follow along with what we're seeing on our tablets up on the big screen. That would work okay, the way it is now. Yeah, I, I just I just wanted to know on that because occasionally that happens or occasionally somebody comes in from somewhere else with a hand-drawn bunch of, of a set of an application and is that the application we wouldn't take because he they didn't bring it in? Diana, if I may, that'll be addressed in a later bullet here. But um, with respect okay. to, with respect to the projector, what I said initially was projector to use as backup at meeting for commissioners and for as long as Zoom meetings continue for applicants in a butter monitoring. Okay. I just okay. wanted to put it straight in my mind. Okay. Thanks, Diane. So uh, I think this is a seriously good. Yeah, and I don't have to do it on my phone anymore. Yeah. Today. Now this is a requisition, right? I mean, we're asking. Is there are aware of it. They are. Yeah. Already. Yeah. This. The, oh. This is yeah. focus committee. We're not. We're yeah, not. Messing around. We're not Wait, voting. You get pizza and tablet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, guys, the yeah. idea here is that we're dealing with these kind of day-to-day -day things so that we can start to focus on the, the forest instead of the little trees. Yeah. So I, I'll ask in the spirit that all of these get passed, um, even if it's on a trial basis, because we, we really got to get stuff moving on. Could that. I ask a question about the scale of bar? Is that something the commission is going to create so we can provide to the public? It, it'll just be a rectangle. They'll put it in pad. They'll mask a rectangle in, and then they'll make it black. I'm just thinking about the people that not necessarily need to have the homeowners that they can draw it or something. Yeah. I just think there should be some sort of document that shows what it looks like. It'll be on our checklist. Okay. Yeah. And I'll get on, I'll, I'll circle back to that when we get to uh, incomplete applications. Do you want us to vote on these as we go? I think so. We should. Okay. Um, yeah. We still need a half size. I just want to get yeah. clear too. Okay. Oh, pardon me. Yeah. Half size. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, and I'm not going to change any of that. Okay. Right. In, um, in any of this vote. So the requirements are as stipulated in one B, and I would ask for um, I would ask the chair to ask for a motion to approve as submitted. Uh, so moved for that request for a motion. Thank you, Steve. Who would like to? I'll make that motion. Can I? Can come on the OSC? No. Yeah, of course you can. Yeah. Okay. To adopt this as a best practice. All right. Uh, do we want to put a, a fuse on it at sunset, or are we good just keeping it open? And then if it's not working, we just reevaluate. We just figure we'll reevaluate. We'll, okay, so then that's just to adopt. Okay. Uh, yeah. As written. 
So that um, okay, so this is number one on on Val's motion to adopt uh, item one under best practices. Um, uh, Diane. Aye. Thank you, Abby. Aye. Thank you, Stephen. Aye. Thank you, Val. Aye. And I'm in favor. Item one, good to go. That's great. Okay, item two, Stephen. Okay, so item two is perhaps the most controversial. I was going to not do that one until we got through some small yeah, stuff. Yeah, let's do the small stuff first. Yeah. Okay. Why do the big stuff when we can do the small stuff? So consent items. Okay. Um, basically, there's some verbiage here. It's really not for you all. You all understand the difference between the art of approving a shed on consent and a retaining law and what's involved with that with respect to the circumstantial specifics so that it's successful and it's not a pox on the, on the uh, uh, I won't use a Vestal Street Dukes Road as an example, but that type of thing. Um, so it doesn't become an issue bigger than the, re, you know, the retaining law and right, right through so. So uh, a lot of the verbiage in the initiative addresses those types of matters of why it's significant for us to be involved in consents the way that it's being proposed. And basically what's being proposed is, is simply that um, to get items that are languishing on consent that are otherwise consentable is that we all would volunteer for uh, one, one interval every, there's seven of us, so it would be basically once every almost two months. Bless you. Um, we each would volunteer to go through the latest added items that are on um, applications that haven't been reviewed for consent. It would be once every seventh week. Um, part of that process would involve uh, helping our staff to understand what specifically is uh, consentable based upon the applications at hand. There's no better example than an application that's in front of you. So what I'm proposing, what we're proposing in addition is that um, we each volunteer for, you know, we set up a calendar and we've asked staff for assistance. Um, we zoom in, we would be able to go right on the web page like we do now to look at applications. You can determine how you want to do it. Do you want to look at them all? Do you, you know, sometimes you may, some people may look at them based upon where they are and what they are. Is it a pool in downtown? I want to look at all those. Mm -hmm. Um, some people may want to look at a fence. Some people may want to look at other things. It, it's best if we look at each of them because we're trying to train staff. Um, mm -hmm. And you click on it, you open it up, and you go through your process. You're just ba basically vocalizing what you think. Um, for me, for example, it would be, gee, there's, you know, there's, let's use an easy one. There's a shed in the front of the house, and it's not on Humming Pond Road, and it's not 50 feet from the street. It's on Westchester. Definitely not consentable. Mm -hmm. Or you may say, you know, it's in the historic district. I never put anything on consent in the historic district. Mm -hmm. The benefit of this approach is that staff are, are, and this is staff, whether we had a brand new administrator who was the unicorn of everything. They understood every aspect of how to perfectly run the HDC to the commissioner's likes. They still need to be um, uh, acclimated to the guidebook and the kind of preferences of the committee, the commissioners, and their subjective interpretation. Mm -hmm. So this, I think, is a useful thing to be doing regardless of, of who's involved. Um, it would be, so commissioners review incoming applications per hour or so on a rotating basis in a Zoom environment staff. How does that work? You basically just have like a little Zoom meeting. You could be at your house. And I just you, come in. Can yeah, we do that? Well, you can do that. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. yeah. It doesn't have to be. Sure. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't have to be Zoom. I'm just saying, it's, or otherwise, it's, it's an option. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. So you just uh, they show us that brief explanation of relevant specifics. Uh, it could be akin to a design shred, or perhaps if, if time allows, uh, or if your style is more bullet point approach, that works too. Um, you know, you're doing a quick design review. It's not you're spending an hour and a half on an application. You're, right. you're just trying to give staff the ability to sponge up this information. Mm -hmm. So, Stephen? Yeah. Um, so, if, if um, I'm looking at consents at home and I have this new tablet, mm -hmm. right? Um, I go to the tablet and I see consents and I open up the same way I would if I were to get it normally. Actually, okay. no. What would happen is the staff would um, create a folder. Well, it would be say, what's our next order of business? I don't know. Okay, 
So say I was on, or you were on the next one, and you would go to the web page and you would click, you'd go down to the 1129, and then you would just open each one of those up as you go and interact with staff. And you could do it online or here in the office. So we're rotating as a, a board, as board right. member. Right. Correct. Right. 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 Yes. Okay. And then the other part of it is that um, the benefit of this is that, like, when I do consents, I will typically write down why. And then I'll copy the link, I'll put it in an email, I'll write down why it's on consent or why it's not if it was proposed as it. It solves for us having to do extra work. So you can be much quicker about it. Mm -hmm. And you know, somebody who's waiting for a shed on Hummock Pond Road that's 50 or 100 feet from the road isn't held up unnecessarily for six weeks. Mm -hmm. So that would be yeah. the suggestion. Well, and I think knowing who the person is reviewing that week is helpful in case something is on there mm -hmm. that so goes through on consent. Yeah, I well, agree that's a good point. Also, is like a conflict, so those could be bounced to an alternate or something. No, no, I was referring to a situation that's going on right now that we just got called out in the newspaper for. Oh well, yeah, I'm not going to look backwards because I don't. No, know but I'm saying then you know. I, I'm with you. Oh, you're saying you oh, know, don't put it on consent. Okay, I, I'm with you. All right, Diane, did you have a question? Yeah. Um, Steve. Diane. Yeah, what I I would think it was a good idea. Yeah, just a minute. I'm I'm unmuted. Um I think it would be a good thing if we just initialed the the papers that we looked at, the the consents that we looked at. So if there's a problem in the coming up, all we have to do is see who who approved it and what their point was. Without any, I'm sorry, go ahead. I think it would be a good idea. It would make it easier to to pinpoint a, a problem and it would relieve any question about who did it or where it came from. I think just put initials on it to say you were the one who did that particular set. Sure, that um, I, I personally would have no concerns with that. You're identifying the responsible party. We've got a commissioner to blame. Um, and there was another point I was going to make, but oh, the other one is that this doesn't change the fact that any commissioner can right. Right. before the out. before the agenda, when the agenda's out, is they can look at consent or consent with conditions and call it out. Right. I disagree. Yeah, this yeah. is you know, yeah, this that I, I, doesn't change that. Just to be clear, that's all. all. It just puts our name on the on the ones that we looked at. That's all. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so unless there's other questions, let me yeah, sorry. Abby, did you have a comment? Um uh, uh, just uh, the logistics of rotating from, from board member to board member. Like, do we there will be staff? And if you can't do it, you've got to find your replacement or you do it. Okay, so it's like babysitting. Yeah. It's like a paddle rotation. That's good. Okay. Paddle rotation. Thank you. There you go. Yeah. And you know, you're. I think I get. We'll have to try. We'll have to try. Yeah, it. I think yeah. we'll try it. And you know, the upside is that it works, and uh, in addition, staff feel more confident and comfortable. Right. No, I know. And making that's accurate it. determinations. And well, that's it. Also, when that. you're doing it, like, because I when we used to do them sort of randomly. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. I'd be like. This is close, but I would like to have confirmation by right. another member. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those could be categorized as such, or yeah, it could be up to me something. if it's my turn to call you and say, what do you think of this yeah. one? Look at it. Will you confirm that it's consensual? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's on an individual well, basis. Yeah. We have yeah. Well, the way we would, I mean, not yeah. to be a sticker for the detail, but how that would work is you would say to staff, other staff, whoever's working with, I'm not sure about this one, get another opinion. Yep. Yeah. And right. then they would just randomly pick some more. Right, right, right. 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 Okay, yeah. so it sounds like a workable system. Yeah. So the action item is, um, uh, let's see, vote these requirements for one-year trial period again. We can, well, I, I don't think a one-year trial period is actually necessary. Um, I've added that in, in many of these, thinking that if there was um, yeah, someone here who was um, changed or any, including a member of the public, we could fill a bone there legitimately. So basically, um, they, motion would be to adopt the requirement including to and i say respectfully request necessary administrative assistance of plus because we you know we don't direct the plus staff 
we need to be coordinating that through the whomever that person is. We'll identify that person. We'll you know put our heads together and make sure that as required, uh, the scope to implement this and any of the related materials like resources and timeline are in place. And I'm gonna, as opposed to saying that little bit I just said again, yeah. I'm just gonna say, work it out with plus on the other ones, okay? Because that's like a lot of <laughs> waste of time. Yeah. Uh, so um, not to, just to keep us moving, yeah. if there's a motion to approve this uh, requirement or this best practice, I think Val said that well, uh, consent items. Is there a motion? I will make that motion and add Diane's um, initial, the comment about putting your initials as the reviewer so that there's some accountability. Can I ask on that? Can that be just in the format of an email? Yeah. Yeah. In yeah. yeah. In addition to all of your yeah. initial, whatever is required, it's all of the chain. Um, okay, so that is, uh, Val, was that your motion? Yeah. Okay. Um, so that is Val's motion. On Val's motion, Abby. Aye. Thank you, Stephen. Aye. Uh, Diane. Aye. Thank you, uh, Val, on the motion. Aye. And I'm good. Okay, okay, so that's item number three. We want to move to four, Stephen? Yes, sir. Okay. So this is uh, a best practice to establish a rule to eliminate lack of responsiveness. 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 I can speak today by an applicant or their agent. Um, I'm, again, you know, a tremendous amount of time, goodwill, are spent in reviewing application revisions, and for, I'll just wait until Bill. Oh, I'm sorry, she asked me a question. I know. I'll just wait. Okay. You good. Okay. Okay. So for every minute a requested revision is required to be reviewed, another minute is taken from other applicants. And a reasonable amount of revisions is to be expected. Whereas on a repeated basis, um, it becomes abusive. So, um, and that's wittingly or not, I'm not suggesting anyone is doing this with intention. It's just we're identifying that it's an abuse of the process, that it's unfair to other applicants and the butters. And to, to some extent, it's disrespectful to the commission and volunteer time. So the idea here is to cure and curb that activity. Um, the requirement would be that we all adopt the rule uh, named here for convenience as a three and out rule. And after initial hearing, applicants through their agents or themselves who submit revisions without materially responsive changes that are in keeping with commissioner's consensus request. So the group of us at a meeting, if they fail to do that, Upon the discretion and vote of the commission, their application will be denied. Um, it would be denied as due to lack of responsiveness to the commissioner's requests. So to summarize, we're trying to move, move people along to be responsive to consensus revision requests. If they're not responsive, there is a real life penalty and that real life penalty is that you get a denial subject to the vote of commission. This isn't, you come in, you don't do it in three three times, all of a sudden everyone is getting a denial. Automatic. Yeah, it's, right. it's discretionary. Yeah, we have to make a decision yeah. that they, gee, they haven't really done anything we've asked for. Which I is lowered a, it by one inch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I did that three times over the course of three meetings. So I really lowered it three inches. Um, so, you know, the funny thing about this is, is that we already have the power to do that. And I think this is just more about sending a message out that to, to applicants and to, uh, well, yeah, to applicants and agents that, uh, the, we actually have a policy about this and we're going to keep track of how many times you come in. And you don't want a denial when we get to number six, so okay. they feed hand in hand. Yeah, well, again, I think this is, uh, it, you know, the funny thing is, uh, I look at our agendas and the new business, when I get to a new business cycle, it actually goes pretty quickly mm -hmm. because three quarters of them, we just approve. I mean, or we approve with Mond or whatever, mm -hmm. but then there's this sort of lingering old business where we'll have old business things that have gone on for 
like years literally years and they just stay on the old business and they keep coming back and so uh again i'm very much in favor but i, I would like to hear from everyone else on this can, can i say that is there a time limit if we were if we send them back after three things do we say you can't reapply for the next six months I think they might be getting. To, I think they might be getting to that in another one of the um, articles, Diane. I'm not sure, but yeah, yeah. Then I uh, there is Diane will address that in a subsequent one if that's okay. Yeah. You good? Sure. Okay. Yep. Um, okay. Any other comments on this one? Do you guys all agree? On the denial, yeah, it's statement. discretionary, so sometimes it is we're going to allow it to go to four or five. But yeah, if there's a serial repeaters, who are yeah, just, I mean, this part of this is, I you know, as our chairman said, this we can do now, but part of this is part of this the exercise is to make others aware, but also to keep it in our mind, and so we start to institutionalize these protocols both right. at a, a commissioner and a staff level. Well, I think it also will make applicants more responsive. Responsible. responsible. Yeah. And we have to stick to that or making up a rule we don't stick to with well one of the yeah. one of the rule protocols will be that we print this out and everyone brings it to the meeting and they when they have breakfast they read it. Mm -hmm. And that might every day until that. It's in there. Yeah. So is there a motion uh, to adopt the best practice uh, regarding lack of responsiveness? Make, I make a motion. Very good. And so Diane's motion has been on item number four under best pack practices. On Diane's motion, Val. Aye. Thank you, Abby. Aye. Stephen. Aye. Diane, on your motion. Aye. And I'm in favor too. May oh. I ask a question? On yes, that? of course. Do you have action items to post this as a legal notice? I do. Um, so uh, this. Are we still? So the board? action item is part of the best practice recommendation. So part of it will be that um, this is not for one year, right? Yeah. No. Okay. No, it is or no, it is. It says established for a one year trial. Period. Do you want to do it for one year? I don't think that's necessary. Okay. I, I think that with any of yeah, this, stuff, all, all, stop again, it. I don't want to speak for the board, but you know, th this already has flex in that it's discretionary, not mandatory on the part of the board. So if it's not really working for whatever reason, uh, we can sort of we just forget it by a natural death. But, right. uh, you know, I so I don't think that's necessary to have that in there as a sunset date. OK, so what I'm going to suggest is two things. One, I want to answer Holly's question. Uh, part of the action item is to post the rule in a legal notice form at the bus building, the town building, and with the employer and media. <laughs> And to impose and post to the HDC webpage a compilation of these rules and protocols. Perfect. Can it be shot out to every applicant who's ever applied? Yeah, sure. Okay. Did you say email? can it be? Can it be? Yeah. Oh, it's the shoot out email. email. Be. Are they really? Is that master? No. Is it such a thing? Uh, no. Sending it out? Yeah. Just so individually, everybody who's ever applied gets it. Um, and what we acquire. Do, Mr. Chair, if I may, yeah. um, is on our HBC submission email. <coughs> I think there's a way where we can, we already have it so it bounces back to people who say, hey, thank you for your submittal, but if it's a this, make sure you have this. If it's a that, even, mm -hmm. we can also attach this to it so it's available. Mm -hmm. But I was just wanting to mention that we do need to have the public be formally noticed so thank you for mm -hmm. that on yeah. here. Sure. Yeah, I'm trying to cover our bases yeah. so to cut down on discussion. So I included that wherever there was a rule. Okay. <clears throat> so that was be... item four. We're all set, correct? That's all other that's also known as the I lowered it in intro. Yes. Mm -hmm. I like that one. So five is revisit protocols for incomplete applications. Mm -hmm. This will include um when folks don't include their six inch tall, uh six foot tall by one inch wide scale index. That we brought up earlier. It's not written in the text. Um, I, again, commission hearing incomplete applications is wasteful and time consuming, often resulting in additional wasteful time when the same application is extended in a follow up meeting. Waste of time of staff, applicants, the public, and obviously the commissioners. Um, the initiative is to have staff be empowered to redirect applicants uh, when having a complete application uh, to submit. 
requiring submission of materially complete applications in order for an application to be accepted and processed for a hearing. Uh, such redirection of the incomplete applications creates and perpetuates more effective use of staff and commissioner time and a fair and even playing field for all their applicants and reasonable review and provides for reasonable review by buyers. So more simply, uh, applications are reviewed by staff for material completeness prior to acceptance by the HDC. This using existing checklists, uh, materially incomplete applications are not accepted. And um, again, this would be a notice that would be posted as previously indicated. Mm -hmm. And we would be looking to plus to interface to make sure that <laughs> implementation and resources of staff and so on and so forth are all adequate or if something needs to change. Absolutely. So we're you know respective of their process too. Yeah. Okay. So you're gonna add that thing on the list. The bar. I did. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, discussion on item number five. No, I I like this because we do we try to be so nice and we view people's applications that are incomplete. And it it is just a waste of time. So I think if they do it a few times and they can't be heard, they'll get it right. And again, in the past, when we would come and submit an application, somebody would check it. And if something was missing, they'd say, go get that. Right. right. And you couldn't sign in. So it's as simple as taking the sign in board away from the front desk and making somebody get it as E or somebody else to right. sign they'll, in, they'll, check the paperwork. Yeah, there'll be like a little mini appeals process, right? If they go to the front desk and they say, well, it's not complete, and the applicant says, well, I, wait a second, then they can bounce as may or Karen and Doris were brutal. If I may, for the chair, I actually sent out an email this morning to all of the plus staff requesting that applications are now reviewed right at the spot. Like right now, the process is they just come in, drop it off, sign it, mm -hmm. sign it in, and then you're on your merry way. That's actually what used which, to happen. Which mm -hmm. it was yeah. great, but now with the influx of so many applications and like Val says, so many incomplete applications, by the time we get to it, it's Sometimes too late. Yeah. So now, like I said, I sent out a message email to all the staff saying, listen, from now on, once applications come in, don't let the applicant leave till we review it on the spot. Make sure, and I did a small checklist. Look at site plan, topo, abutters. And there are checklists that we, uh, Bill and I spent a considerable amount of time working up with Kathy Flynn that yeah. are on the whole drive. Yes. Although well, they're all there. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, just to share, and we can interface on this offline if you guys want me to work with staff or if you want to deal with it, Ray, I'm happy to have you. I remember involved. being afraid to come in and not have it complete. Well, but so that's the point I wanted to make on all of these. I'm sorry to interrupt, but this isn't in any way to become or intended to become punitive or you know like a kind of a fascist regimen of of like if you come in and like you honestly have a re you know you have a reason why it's not included because it's not necessary you you know we would suggest that they bounce it to esme or holly at you know a certain point in the process because you all have the experience to say no they don't need that and then you can say to the other staff why yeah and then so then it becomes a culture of learning and sharing the information and i think that's going to be an important step i did want to add on to the fact of why applications were just dropped off because we just got out of a pandemic yeah that was, right that was oh, that yeah. was staff's um way to go okay we're gonna we're gonna help you but it was people side stay and, out of here yeah so <laughs> and um, that was at back when when Kathy was here, and you know she God bless her doing putting all those applications and reviews and whatnot. But as you know, the application has not stopped. It's just been a continuous. Mm -hmm. But why it's allowed the HDC versus it's not allowed at the planning board? If you apply for a second dwelling permit, if you don't have all the information, Correct. you're not well. You're not it, 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 it bounces to the amount of applications. If we get to this, if we get to this vote, it won't be allowed at the HDC. <laughs> I motion to adopt the best practice. The application. The application. Yeah, so that's item number five, just for the record, folks. And that was Val's motion to adopt it uh, on Val's motion. Diane? Aye. Very good. Abby? Aye. Stephen? Aye. Val on your motion? Aye. And I'm in favor. Okay, we're moving along. We still got some to get through, guys. But and I know this is taking up time, but it's going to take yeah, time. Yeah, no, I, I see. 
the cost benefit for me is, is, is on the positive side. Okay, great. So we're going to revisit a previous rule addressing waiting period after denial. Um, that's both in terms of a, a previous rule that existed and also in our recent discussion today and yesterday. Um, it's the same thing, wasteful, painful, unproductive review, time spent rehearsing, rehearing a previously denied application. Um, uh, this initiative creates a prophylactic effect in a non-punitive way um, to uh, create similar behavior where people are not um, getting a denial and then coming back in a year. So uh, that is to say, uh, initiate a rule requiring a waiting period after denial. Um, what it boils down to is the commission voting to establish uh, as proposed a three-year waiting period to rehear an application that is substantially the same or similar to the application previously denied, which waiting period shall automatically become effective upon denial of every application, unless noted otherwise. Is that worthwhile? Uh, explain, by the commission ex otherwise. explain the and unless noted otherwise. Unless for some reason the commission says otherwise. That they, that, that in the rule. once again, that they would waive and it was discretionary the three year waiting period. Yeah. Um, yeah, like somebody got or sick. No. There's not that many. Mm -hmm. Like somebody got sick and they can't come back or something. Right. So I mean, it's kind of hard to come up with an example. Of, like, but wouldn't it? Wouldn't I guess I shouldn't open my mouth, but because I wouldn't it just by virtue of the nature of the not the denial, right? We had not the current stone alley, previous stone alley was denied. It was stated factually as to why. Yeah. We've other others we've did we've um have we ever denied something without prejudice? I don't think so. It doesn't really make sense that it would be to, that it would be you no know, without so as to say that would qualify for not being subject to this rule. Right. I can't think of an instance where if something's denied, it shouldn't be can, subject to this rule. Can't remember very many denials, period. Yeah, no, I can't either. But, but yeah, a property changing hands shouldn't be made to wait three years. No, but it's if they don't materially change the application. Oh, right. It's not just if you put an application right. on a property. Right. As, okay. Are you taking public comments? Uh yeah. Okay. If I just asked if they're brief. I guess I, yeah. Hi everyone. Quick comment. I'd be concerned about um, having an overly punitive um, measure because I think it would make you hesitant to um, deny applications, um, especially as you're trying to build up these um, denials that are based on um, abuse of protocol. That's my only thought for your consideration. I actually make it harder to deny things. I had a similar thought. Hillary, which was three years is is onerous, of yeah, course, very. But uh, yes, I want to retract us here. We're not talking about an application on the property. We're talking about a materially similar application. So, for instance, historically, let's use an example. Two Stone Alley came in; it was denied. Two Stone Alley came in again; it was nearly the exact same application. In both those instances, we spent an inordinate amount of time processing. The key there is, is that I don't disagree with the concept. One of not, we don't want to be punitive. And two, we don't want to create a, um, diminish the uh, utility of it by not using it for fear that we're doing something punitive. But this is about an application that is denied and, and resubmitted in materially the same form. How will we integrate it? Like will will we review it ahead and say no we're not accepting this it would be up to staff to review so um, technically your coas your your review process like if somebody receives an approval it's good for three years yeah. so a denial could last for three years and that's is that what you're trying yeah to and there's other process? precedent i mean this isn't without precedent yeah. no i know there's precedent with on the zoning side zoning side of things oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I want to make an important distinction, but I don't think it's relevant to this particular language that we're looking at because we're talking about something that is materially the same or similar. The only thing I would question on whether or not that would um, require anything to the special act. I don't think so. We've been that, that's problems. what I would like to have yeah. that verified. That so, would be my so hold this one for well, now. Well, wait, I want to push back a little bit on that as an academic exercise. 
the ACC under the Act is charged to make its own rules and regulations. Yeah. So we can, you know, we can say, you know, I'm not suggesting that under a lawsuit that wouldn't, be, you know, we, we can say you can't have, you know, ruby colored doors and windows. Um, now, whether someone were to take the HEC to court and it be deemed unconstitutional is another matter, but I don't think that we should be in the habit of referring things to town council. I think we should make our own decisions. We need to stand on our own two feet. If you all don't agree with that, I have no issue with that, but I don't think we should be bouncing things back to town council if, if it's clearly a rule and regulation that we can make, and I think we can. So. Um, I'm thinking of this as a in a different way, not necessarily with a building, but what about solar? Mm -hmm. oh, People look same... to us to deny them so they can appeal it. Boy, that would cure that, wouldn't it? Yes. Uh, it Steve, would. Don't, don't, uh, Steve, don't we have a rule that says that we can hold it for a specific length of time? Isn't that an old rule in the HTC? <laughs> yeah, we used to have a rule that I verified this. I don't, you know, I haven't looked for it. It wasn't in the rules and regulations that I've seen, the text written ones, but there was a denial waiting period. Right. Now, maybe people it was are more comfortable doing yeah, it. definitely but was because I remember that. Dan, you remember what the period was? The period of time? Uh, I thought it was two years for for a house that you know had had the denials, and that they couldn't apply reapply for that length of time. That may be. Also, what the town has for denials at a town meeting. So I'm not absolutely sure, but it was a length of time. I don't believe it was three years. I believe it was a shorter length of time. Okay, how about this? Dan, I'm sorry. I'm just cognizant of time. I totally get what you're saying. Um, that's with respect to zoning. But what if it is by a majority vote and it's two years? Or a unanimous vote and it's two yeah. years? Something is unanimously right. voted as a yeah. denial. I'm good, and you bring it back, and it hasn't changed materially. You know, you and it was a, it was a unanimous it. vote. You don't get an opportunity to you know, have it come back in front of. I think yeah, that's, that's pretty strong. next week. You know, it, I, I I think that that's safe. Subject to unanimous vote. Unanimous. Yes. 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 Yeah, yeah. I think that's a patient. Mm -hmm. It won't go by. Well, no, I think it will spur some some applications to actually really listen hard and make substantial changes. And it'll be for two years. Mm -hmm. Is that what? I yeah. Think that's, that's how many how many years did we look at to Stone Alley that it came back? Um, way what, more than four two. years. Four. Yeah. Okay. Four. So, is there a motion to uh, adopt the best practice? I make that. Yeah, and, and, and I that modified was, with the two years and the unanimous vote, right? Yes. Okay, thank you, Diane, for that motion. Uh, on Diane's motion, Val. Aye. Abby. Aye. Stephen. Aye. Diane, on your motion. Aye. Thank you, Diane. I'm in favor. Okay, I'm going to keep going quick. Uh, okay. Revisit protocol for timely submission of supplemental application materials. Basically, you know what happens is we get into a meeting, we're delayed by someone presenting information at the table. This idea is the problem is there's a tendency to create incoherent reviews where our process is disruptive, disrupted, our flow of reviewing documents is disrupted. It makes it difficult to keep on track. And um, I can't think of an example where. Um, I can't think of an example, but I know it's happened where that almost is like a strategy for maybe one person mm -hmm. and um, things get approved that would not necessarily get approved. And I'm not naming that. I'm not pointing fingers. Mm -hmm. I'm not suggesting that it's even intentional on their part, willful on their, wittingly on their part, but it is how they proceed and it's problematic. So the idea is that supplemental information is, is provided on the same schedule as every oh supplemental information would be provided the you mean like the week before no so there's there's only an exception yes and there's only an exception for extenuating circumstances uh one time per application and there is an accommodation that 
if you're bringing in additional images or limited volume background information or other kind of quick clean information that is mm -hmm. not the design change yeah. we're not going to prohibit that because it's helping us to do our job okay right? so this i have a, a, a scenario that i think that's a challenge yeah please we, we're waiting eight weeks to be heard then we are asked for revisions or better yet I'm going to use something I'm working on, hasn't been heard yet. And it's gone to HSAG. And I've made the revisions they wanted. I can send them in, but I don't want to screw these guys up. And I know that you don't like getting them at the last minute. So, how do you suggest we do that? There's because two. there's been like two weeks I could have sent this in already, but well, it's the week in advance. And wouldn't you just do a whole new application, including that information? So there's all still just one PDF. They're just replacing your original PDF with the new one, with the new information you're providing or the new design you're providing. But make sure it's in a week before it's slated to be up. And I, I think that's it. great. And I'm all for that. But I, I see the other side of it, too. Somebody will put something in to get in line and then... Well, but not if it's that goes back to our incomplete right. application. If, and between the two of these, if you submit something and it's not what you actually want to talk about, or it's not complete, that it's between the two of these rules, you don't get to submit something that's a placeholder, right? And then you turn something right. in at the last minute, right? So, and the other thing I just want to say, I think this is the HCC's ace in the hole and all this stuff, is the last. Item which is in a bullet is a general comment, and it's you know I was going to say we adopt this at the end, but with respect to page five, with respect to each of the foregoing, the commission upon a public vote in favor may, when consistent with the spirit and intent of the respective initiative, waive strict conformance. Mm, yeah. So we're not like locked in, but we're also broadcasting our intentions, and yes, yeah. a duty upon us to be fair and even and and monitoring and enforcing that. I do but. Is that fair? Because yes. okay. that's why I got elected. Because yeah. but isn't fair and even, Stephen? Is it part of this to reduce their amount of work and catching up with? Oh, this right. one, this file, this file. Oh yeah. It just supplements the entire thing. If you have new information or if you have, then come in with the all the new sets. Speak with one of them. Pull that right there. Well, supplement. Yes yeah. and no, because you also have to remember anytime you submit something to us and we stamp it as received, mm -hmm. that's part of the public record. Mm -hmm. Regardless if it is approved or not, that's right. why staff approvals can take a little bit of time because not only are we going through the weeks that you guys reviewed, but we're taking, we're making sure there's a copy of that in the file, whether it's digital or a hard copy mm -hmm. and throwing the necessary other copies away. So whatever you submit to the town to us is public record yeah right. so we have to stamp it so right. if that's being done i think that's fine as long as it's clear that your initial submittal what wasn't reviewed yet you, right. you tweaked it based on advisory comments right i don't think that's a problem because mm -hmm. you know regardless if the advisory boards go back or not you're anybody can come in and say hey holly you have comments on application i've provided as you know Comments to the two two applications, but that have not occurred. You've you've seen a couple of them. Yeah. Linda came to me on a couple of applications. Hey, I worked with Holly. We revised these based on Holly's comments. You know, something to that effect. Those original plans are still in the file. Right. But that's not what necessarily got approved. That makes no. sense. Right. So what's the problem? I'm not trying to complicate. No. It. I'm just yeah. Like, yeah. I'm no. No. It's like it's having right. Exhibit B. Yeah. I mean, like adding. You yeah. Have an option, yeah, an option. You have option A on the submission, but then you have right. Right. Part of the file. So we can look at it online, and the abutters can look at it online. Yeah. The public can look at it online, and basically, what would happen is it could just simply be labeled by the street name. If if we're looking at, you know, we've got whatever the street address is, main house, and the date. And then for supplementals, we have whatever the street name is, the house, supplemental, and the date. So then when we pull it up online, it's all right there. Boom, 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 sequentially, maybe not, but at least labeled. 
very easy to review. And how do we put this into like if, if we're, we're let's say we all just got the application and then the applicant person comes up and says, oh, by the way, I have this that I wanted oh, to right. reach out. Now we right. say no, right. no, this. You're, you're, it, it yeah. creates that. It, it, so no yeah. bringing it to the table. No. Yeah. No, unless it's, it's back unless here, it's one week before. backup information. Let me just right. read, let it's me just. Unless, yeah, the accept the accommodation, first of all, no bringing it to the table, number one, except due to extenuating circumstances, delays, and so on, on a one time per application basis. Again, remember, we can always accept things if we want to as a vote. Mm -hmm. Number two, the accommodation uh, would be an exception provided for additional images, limited volume back value. Ask the question, I'll listen, please. Okay. The exception would be for um, additional images, limited volume background information, or other quick clean information, none of which are design changes. Okay, okay. just just informational, historical, yeah, supplemental. Okay. And if you want, that's not to say you can't. Let's be clear, it's not to say you can't submit design changes. You just don't get it. You've got to do it a week before. Yeah. And if you don't, then you're on the next agenda. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. I'll. I'll, I'll are we done with that one? I think so, unless you guys want to talk about some more. Mm -hmm. So I'll is there a motion, motion to adopt no, supplemental application? Adopt. There it is. Um, supplemental. Abby has made that motion, and that was item seven, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So uh, um, the, this, this the motion on, on item seven, uh, Abby's made the motion. On the motion, Diane? Hi. Thank you. Val? No. Okay. Uh, Stephen? I'm an I. Okay, Abby, on your motion. I'm an I. And I'll be in favor too. So that means that motion actually approved four in favor, one opposed. And we'll work it out with Val. I'll work. I'll, yeah. We'll work through it. Yeah. If there's something we missed, we'll address it. The idea is that if you have identified a potential problem, it, you know, let's let's suss it out. But in the meantime, we can get this on the boards. Okay. That's all I'm I suggest. Think. That's a good idea. It's not a material because we don't have a meeting a week from today. And yeah, if we it wait. Gets hurt. It's oh, there's Christmas. nothing next week. Yeah, it'll be New Year's. That's yeah. like we've got to move. We're, like I said at the beginning, we're in a hole and we got to stop digging. Okay, establish a rule for repeated postponement of hearings by applicant. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I want to be really clear on this. This is an initiative with respect to applicants as opposed to commissioner requests who directly or through their agents, repeatedly postpone hearings, um, which can amount to abuse of the process. So um, when this is deployed or de when this is when deployed or deployed by multiple applicants, agents, the course of other hearings are disrupted, causing ripple effects and issues throughout the system, including with respect to the needs of other applicants. A rule to prevent repeated postponements is both reasonable and beneficial. Um, Skip that line about the, I don't know what I was cutting and pasting. I left something out from the previous. The last line doesn't make any sense. Uh, basically, you all re, re, would adopt a rule to establish that um, a postponement of more than one hearing by an applicant or the agent shall result in the application being moved to a later point in the queue. At minimum, two calendar meetings from the date of the second postponement. So if you postpone twice, you get bumped two weeks on the list. So if it's 1129, you get bumped two weeks down. If you do it once, you don't get bumped. You're just postponed. Right. Mm -hmm. um, there's another part to that. Uh, in the event of a third or subsequent postponement, the application shall be moved to the then current bottom of the queue, i.e. last in line. Um, Technically, there wouldn't be a third postponement. Are you talking about after they've already got two? Yeah, after they got saying, bumped. Two and you're bumped. Yeah. That next bump, if that comes up and they postpone. Which will wait to the end, whatever yeah. happens to be. Okay, yeah. Note that a, a bona fide emergency postponement is understood to be required from time to time, required on, on the applicant's part. However, more than a single emergency postponement qualifies under the foregoing rule as if it were not emergency related. Um, so one second, Diane. So basically, if you postpone, emergency and it's twice you get one by but after that it falls into the rule okay and again um oh uh, there should be a comma oh, there i mean that's it's, it's redundant because you're allowed one postponement regardless of emergency or no 
right? Yeah, I guess that's true. You know, so it's it is redundant. Um, but you know, the idea of there being one postponement and then an emergency, we didn't want to avoid that because that's <laughs> that's again gaming the system. Yeah, yeah, there's no go back. Oh. Oh. Sorry, sorry, Diane, I'll get to you it's in one not second. Diane, it's somebody else. Oh. <laughs> Uh, who is that speaking? Deborah, somebody. Can I just read them? Yeah, oh, please. Okay. Be vigilant. Sorry. No, I was just saying on the second oh, postponement, that's when you're saying, no, you're you're not here. It's going to the bottom. It's going to the back of the... Well, I guess whatever. what I'm saying is the first postponement is your grace. That, that's your, you know, one given. And then after that, when you get to the second one, then the measures kick in. Right. And we want to avoid it being like, Oh well, I'm going to do this twice, so the second time is going to be my emergency. No, so you're scr you're suggesting emergency. scratching the scratch the whole emergency. emergency. Okay, okay, so we'll scratch that. You know, I didn't yeah, want that, that, to be that's built. Yeah. That's built into the cake with the first. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So your your reason for your postponement is your own. Yeah. But after that, you're subject to the rules. Yeah. Okay. I think that's relatively simple. I guess common sounds good. I mean, I like it. And you're going to post this again so people know. Or all know all under the same legal notices, all yeah. under the same touch base with staff, make sure there's, you know, we're not missing something on resources. And this will have to be something that staff monitors. Yeah. You know, first time somebody postpones, okay, how many is yeah. that? It's, and that's what I mean when I'm suggesting that we need to work through this. Yeah, we need okay. to work through this with us guys to make sure that there's no way to keep track of it. Excuse me. I, I'm, I'm going to, I, I want to raise this point. Okay. Postponements actually aren't like a problem for the board. In it's fact, you no, know, it's like, hey, you know what? Yeah. I'm going to kick the can down the road. I don't care. They can postpone it. But the, the, the real issue is neighbors will say, okay, I got to fly up to Nantucket. I got to make my voice heard, you know, this mm -hmm. Tuesday. So this, this whole gesture is really about what I think we can all acknowledge is a way of gaming the system to try and like, oh, let's get the neighbors out of there. Let's keep postponing so that, that you know, eventually they're not going to show up anymore. That's what this is all about. So it's not about us, the board members. It's really more about the neighbors. And so um, it's about us being reasonably inclusive. It's also yeah, yeah. So, so, so okay. let's think this through for a moment. Now, I'm a neighbor, and the week before, um, I'm looking at the agenda. Now, if somebody has mm -hmm. said, I want to hold it the week before, then they're not going to schedule their trip from, from Baltimore to Nantucket to voice their concerns. They have reasonable notice that it's not going to happen. I think the real issue comes is when the neighbors are all there, the applicant walks into the room and says, oh, okay, we're going to hold this. And then all the four neighbors that have all, all come from all around are like, that's great. We just wasted our time again. So could we work in like, if you know, like a week or two weeks in advance that you're not going to be able to do it for whatever reason, well, then it's not about monkeying with the neighbors. It's like you just kind of can't have it heard then because you're going to be on vacation or something like that. So so um, carve out based on what a two week prior notice. Two week prior notice, and I think that that then that does not the two week prior notice would make you exempt from this postponement rule. Right. The, so this then the neighbors would have adequate notice. Right. Yeah, because it'll show up in the. Well, wait, what's, hey, it'll show up in the. Yeah, I just want to close that point. The the way neighbors would get notice is simply clicking onto the calendar, looking at the next agenda, and because we're including action items that we may not necessarily hear at the current meeting. A few weeks out is still on the paper called agenda, and they will see that it is on a hold until a certain date. Mm -hmm. Correct. So sorry to interrupt. But... No, no, no. I'm sorry. I was interrupting you. But the other trickle down effect is that the list is long, and these number of projects get held for the next week, the next week, the next week. 
So all the ones at the bottom who've never been heard yet are still not heard for weeks and weeks and weeks. So all these ones that are on the agenda this week, oh, but we're going to hold it for the top of the agenda next week. Those ones at the yeah. bottom still stay there. Yeah, right. So there. the cycle doesn't ever yeah. get to the people well, who it doesn't... applied four months, two months ago. Right. So it's not punitive. So right. That's why. Say. That's why. Exactly. That's why it has to like you have to get bumped somewhere where it's gonna be a little painful. Well, it's not even actually friendly. show up to your meeting because you've taken the time to get your application in. Mm -hmm. to the board and mm -hmm. on this agenda so be there yeah. and if you're not you're not getting bumped to the top of the list next week right right so and it's currently not even then, uncomfortable and i don't think it's i don't think it's making it punitive but it is making it uncomfortable for people. there's consequences to, to pulling be, yourself yeah. out yeah, it's unfair. yeah we're making it error and maybe have a caveat that this has nothing to do with whether or not we you don't have a full board or to that yeah, That's so not yeah, so it's it, the way it's worded is applicants yeah. directly yeah. report their agents repeatedly postponing hearings. So yeah. it's it's that it's on them. It's not yeah. about us. I think that's a good point. Though. I'll make yeah. a motion to approve that number nine. Is that eight. 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 And, and do we have? Uh, we'll have to make sure that we have the revised. Yeah, I've got uh, to include. Yeah. So your motion would be to include a car out based on a two week prior notice. Abby? Yes. Okay. I don't think there's any language about where. Oh, yes, there is. Goes to the bottom of the agenda or two weeks or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll work that on. All right. So that's the modified. Uh, that 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 is a motion on the modified uh, item number eight. Uh, comes from Abby. On that motion, Diane. Yeah, she's she's muted. muted. Okay. How about you, Val? Aye. Okay, uh, Stephen. Here I am. I. Okay, thank you, Diane. Abby, on your motion, Aye. and I'm in favor. Okay, okay so we're we've got nine ten, and I want to remind you we got to go back to number two. So we rounded yeah. the bend, and we're closing in on wrapping up. I don't think we're going to get to any. Uh, I did that, that up. <laughs> hey, you know what? Well, the end is waiting for an application. You should know that. Don't you enjoy this? Yeah, well, no, I'm learning something every time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. I just didn't want you to change this. Okay. Established protocol for uh, this is a simple one uh, yeah. for reflecting material grade changes. So that is substantive grade changes in applications. This is the two foot rule we talked about. It boils down to cross section elevations to show show uh, existing conditions in black line with notations in black proposed in maroon and, and uh, that would be lines and notations in maroon. So we're systematizing this for every drawing. Now, initially it's not gonna be perfect, but we wanna be able to, where it's confusing to be looking at grade, which often is as it is, it's always going to be the same. So it becomes almost like uh, you can do this in your sleep. Uh, let's see. Uh, that would be, and of course, the structures. That would be in the cross sections. They shall be in areas of great where shall be of areas of greatest proposed grade change. Good. And of typical interest to the HCC review, which is a little ambiguous, but I figured we could discuss that. Where grade change is within five feet of an abutting property, cross section grade lines shall extend over the lot lines of the applicant's property into the abutting lots, a minimum of 10 feet. The same for grading site plans, although those would be in one inch, one foot contours. Okay. Thank you. But, like, did I just hear that? You're grading on the neighbors. No, 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 your drawings are showing like the grade. Now. What their grade is next to yours. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah. the only thing I know from personal experience is your surveyor is allowed to do spot grades on your property, but he ain't allowed to walk over onto the neighbor's property. How about we say projected? Okay. That's fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Your town yeah. topo. Yeah, the topo map will now. have just the general. Yeah. So they would project. Okay. At 10 feet into the neighbors, okay. and we'll have to take it on face value. Mm -hmm. That's a word. Yeah, that'll be a little trust. <coughs> so projected. Okay, so that there is the uh, recommendation. All right, love it. I can I have a motion on that one? Oh, so Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Uh, two points. One is accurate retaining wall notations. So, as is typically provided, but with grade changes, uh, as is typically provided, we we know. Accurate retaining wall. We have retaining wall notations. 
with a greater than two foot existing and proposed retaining wall shall accurately indicate top of the wall and bottom of the wall. Any existing retaining walls, guess should be in black and any and notations and any proposed. I use burnt umber because I always just wanted to say that. I never really had a chance to say that. I'm not even sure what color that is. It's like my sweater. Right. Well, nice. it's, yeah. it's, so it's close to maroon, but it's different. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, yours is burnt sienna. Yeah. So burnt umber is darker. Yeah. Burnt sienna. Yeah. So yeah, umber is a darker. So which would be more appropriate with maroon? Uh, whatever. Yes. Uh, yeah. Burnt sienna. So that was the idea. I'm sorry about that. I mean, they're actually. You want to say umber. Okay. Did you hear the ATCs talking about burnt umber? Yeah. 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 Yeah, we have to. Uh, okay, so that's the and notation. Is, that's though. only about um, uh, feet. We're talking about elevations and change in elevations, not about the materials that might be. No, yeah, that's still required that yeah. the way we normally do applications. Right. This is just it just is. to highlight when we have extreme changes in grade that either do yeah, or don't just, require retainage. That said that it's made much more explicit to us. Comments, um, concerns, criticism. And so we we've already modified the language of that, right? So, yeah. So it would be a projected 10 feet yeah. all across the lot and a burnt sienna. Okay. Well, I think this is a win-win because instead of them coming to us and us asking for them to do it, Reducing it's them. there. Yeah. To start off the review. Yeah. And it's part of be part of the check. Right. So if, you, if your application says a two foot grade change yep. it goes on and it should be equal to or greater than two feet yeah right so i'll right. modify that okay um can i have a motion on the modified language yeah i'll make that motion there's abby abby's made that motion on the motion uh diane unmuted aye thank you diane bell aye okay stephen okay i'm an aye all right abby on your motion aye um, two more to go Yep. So we have flood resistant portions of our pools that are becoming much more frequent. Mm -hmm. um, this is to create a standard that we can, um, so that applicants, uh, agents are aware of it. There's nothing to suggest that we cannot deviate from this language in particular circumstances. Mm -hmm. But the idea is that when we do go with what the building code requires as a design flood elevation, that we're using consistent language. Mm -hmm. So in a way, it's kind of like not visible at time of inspection thereafter. Um, it, not visible at time of inspection thereafter is not applicable to every pool, but when it is, we want the language to be the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's the intent. And so it's going to be a little formed? Well, no. So basically what I'm suggesting here on this particular one, kind of my baby, is... Um, uh, this will update. Bear with me. It didn't bring my bifold. So require one, a flood elevation certificate. Uh, two, a license survey or stamp certification to indicate for the particular property and scope of work, the maximum floor structure height is whatever the feet and inches are, which height is no higher than the minimum required design flood elevation for the property based on the flood zone. Um, the flood zone is not, that information is not in the uh, flood elevation certificate. They default to a community-wide uh, design flood elevation, which is problematic for us if we need to hold someone to a standard because we have multiple flood, flood right. zones and right. design flood elevations as a result. Yeah. The last part of the language would say, um, and submission of the applicable permit. So the permit is basically FEMA's yeah. little... Yeah. It's like our locust plan, but it includes the flood elevation. Yeah, which is very common. And I want to just backtrack. So this is to ensure structures are not constructed higher than the design flood elevation required on under 780 CMR. But that's also subject to what we determine at a vote. So if we determine gee, the neighbor for whatever reason. Here's a great example. The neighboring house is in a more restrictive, which is to say a flood zone that has a much higher. It could be two feet in some instances. We may say, looking at the streetscape, this is going to look, this is going to call attention. We would actually like you, God forbid, I say this, to go higher. To go higher. Yeah. So this isn't restricting us in the terms of what we can approve. It's just giving us language to utilize when we approve a particular design for elevation. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Can I recommend just one aspect to that? Please. 
um, as consistent with the resilient, resilient anti design guideline because all of this is pretty much in there and we want to make sure that the two are tied in. And um, as you and I have previously talked about that checklist that I came up with after mm -hmm. June 2021, I will update that to include this language. So, and as consistent with the resilient, resilient design guidelines. Is anyone concerned about that? No. no. I mean, they are our guidelines. Yep. Now, I do have a question. Sure. Could Lisa and uh, Paul Santos had this, this Paul Santos being as nurse, yeah. you I'm sure know is the surveyor who does this work all the time, mm -hmm. said that a flood elevation certificate can only be issued when the building is finished. So I that's a common misunderstanding. There's actually a place on it to indicate with a check mark that it pertains to prior to construction. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so you can still, uh, you can produce a flood elevation certificate for a building that has not yet been built. Correct. Yes. Okay. And, um, if he wants to talk to his fellow colleagues in the field, Don Bracken has some of those to us. Okay, good, good. And there is a right. place to check because yes. with a surveyor, obviously, it's like an architect, right? You put a wet stamp on it, you own it, your liability insurance, so on and so forth. So you don't want to send one of those out. And have it be, and then it got built differently, and then uh, you're on the line. So you check that. Okay, I like it. Construction part. And then, just with that in mind, do we require one at the end of the job? Yeah. You're required well, to, it's required to get your certificate of, of yeah. occupancy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. From the building yeah. Yeah. And to make sure that they are the same. Yeah. Right. Well, we don't, the building department doesn't verify that. I just, you know, so you understand that would be a staff thing. We would, part of our coordinate with plus language is that with the change of this rule on a checklist somewhere and staff's processing for and its uh, final HDC is, was there a requirement related to FEMA? And if there was, then they'd compare the two. Right. That is an as build if it's not correct. Right. Right. Yeah, right. Applications. right. Yeah, which we require, um, Surveys, anyways, so to get a CO, yeah, right. Yeah. But what the building department requires and what the HDC requires are not always the same. That's why okay. we're right. So you, but that's why we're doing this so they are the same. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the, whether they build it the way they said to the HDC, the building department doesn't check that. Right. But the HDC will have you know, okay. both yeah. pieces of the information. Okay. Gotcha. Right. It would have the before where you approved it and then the after. Gotcha. Okay. Does okay. that make sense? Yep. It sounds good. Okay. Uh, last one. Oh, so wait, wait. We need so to adopt it. Yes. So motion. Oops. I'll okay. make a motion. All right. Valid made a motion to uh, approve uh, the language of uh, Article 10 um, in best practices. So on that motion, Diane. Aye. Thank you, Diane. Uh, Abby. Aye. Stephen. Aye. Uh, Valid motion. Aye. And okay. Last one. I saved the most important for last. So this is a, a methodology to conduct application hearings. Um, as I said at the beginning of the meeting, and you're all aware, we're you know we're not the old HTC of even you know six years ago. The volume of applications are tremendous, and our inclination to make decisions with unanimity and um, help people through the process, I think is admirable and something we shouldn't lose track of. And it's something we should try and revisit when this room kind of quiets down. But in the meantime, we're not gonna get through our meetings if we don't alter the way we conduct our meetings. And I'm not saying that, so, you know, that's a subjective comment, but it's also a fact. Um, and I would ask you all to consider um, this next best practice initiative in that context. I'd also ask you to consider the fact that we're the only group, the only HTC I've seen when I've gone online to look at these and other municipalities around the Commonwealth um, with respect to solar and other reviews uh, that other HTCs conduct. Um, our own zoning board, our own planning board, and even the select board in their appeals process for HTC we're the only uh, regulatory authority that doesn't conduct our meetings consistent with what I've documented here. Um, there may be some exceptions, uh, but this is fashioned after how others perform in order to conduct business effectively. 
Um, and what I mean by effectively is not to lose sight of the important elements of the review, but also not to kind of take extra time. Um, that's the, basically the first sentence, more or less. Um, uh, this is, you know, I don't know, I'll just quickly run through it. The chairperson opens the application hearing and announces the sitting board happens right now. Mm -hmm. uh, subject to a time allotment, we have to determine what the time amount is if we decide to go along with this. The applicant or agent provides a description of matters in front of the commission. B, the commissioners through the chair may ask questions to solidify their understanding of matters at hand. It's not a time to get into the architectural elements or the design. It's simply Correct. informational. We just want to, gee, I don't understand this. I don't understand that. You yeah, might ask a question, Dale, and it makes Abby wonder about something. We get those questions squared away, not only for our benefit, but for the benefit of the butters and the public who are monitoring. Um, the abutters then have an uh, opportunity to speak. They speak after the commissioners, so the commissioners have a chance again to have questions answered. Uh, those questions that are answered may answer questions that the abutters or the public have. That's part of why it happens that way. Um, and at that point, they may ask, ask questions. They can speak. Um, they, I didn't ask, include ask question, but I think that's a given. Um, or they can speak uh, for or against the matters at hand. Mm -hmm. The applicant or agent is allowed a rebuttal. Again, these are uh, proposed to be on some time allotment. I'll note that with respect to a time allotment, the select board does that. And um, at town meeting, we passed legislation that affects this island, which is a uh, you know probably close to a trillion dollar asset. And we do it with people having two minutes to speak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that the HTC can um, get through with you know a minute and don't be redundant. If you, um, whether you're a commissioner, uh, an applicant, or an abutter, or a member of the public, if you agree with someone, you say, I agree with them. But then don't, don't go on to explain how you agree with them. Just like keep it short, keep it simple. Um, if you have detailed comments, you're welcome to submit them via writing a letter uh, in advance. And um, I think when we have a little bit more time, like I think we're going to have, it will be good and, and much easier for board members to read and absorb that information. So that's the first part of the, of the process. Do you want to, you want me just to go through these or do you yes. want to? Okay. Yeah. So then so what you, you're just describing the whole. Yeah, I'm just walking through for the benefit of people who can't see it. The commissioners deliberate, then deliberate on the merits. Uh, no, except for questions arising of the commissioner's deliberations, no further applicant agent or public comments are received by the commission. That is something that happens in all these meetings, um, and it cuts down on the back and forth, it cuts down on the debate, it cuts down on the discomfort of a chair or a vice chair or a member feeling like they have to try and close down discussion that's inappropriate. It just eliminates it as a matter of procedure. Everybody knows in advance what the ground rules are. It's just a fair and even way to proceed. Uh, after the commissioners deliberate on the merits, uh, the commission makes its determination where applicable its decision is recorded on the application, including a spitting through use of an exhibit. So some of these things we already do. I'm, I'm acknowledging that. I'm just trying to present a complete picture. Yep. Um, in each of the foregoing, this is a general comment. Uh, comments of commissioners, applicants, agents, and butters in the public are reserved to the merits of the design with respect to appropriateness. This isn't about somebody, you know, this helps us, you know, noise is unfortunately not our purview. Um, I say unfortunately because if we could weigh in on noise, we'd solve a lot of problems with pools and spas and other things. Um, nor is global warming and sea rising. So, you know, if you're an applicant, you're a commissioner, an applicant, an agent, and a butter, or a member of the public, you're going to be dissuaded from a discussion that does not directly relate to our purview. And I, I know that may sound difficult for some people to hear, but that's simply how it's done in the world. And we function under Robert's rules for the orders, and um, that's part of that. Um, and such matters as those are properly addressed as separate notice agenda items. So under Robert's rules, is I guess the point I was trying to make for my little notes here, is that we address things like policy 
under a separate agenda item where we shouldn't be talking about policy during during we should be reviewing the architectural elements and the merits relative to our guidelines and that's you know i'm just shocked we haven't gotten legal problems from that because we we tend to delve off into policy and again i just want to say the last lastly here two things one this is not to quiet discussion on policy and procedure there is nothing preventing a member who gets an idea or has a concern that doesn't relate to this particular application from making a note and afterwards asking it to be a discussion to be added to other business. Mm -hmm. This isn't stopping that discussion. It's just appropriately allocating time. Lastly, um, I've already said we're going to based on typical. Yeah. Yes. Where would staff comments be in this line? Um, totally unintentional. Thank That's you. Okay. Well, you know what? I was going to actually address staff comments as a number 11, but I thought I'd be pushing it if I went for number 11. Well, um, uh, okay. Along well, those lines, because yeah. I think something that gets missed and that is a time sucker is because staff comments are generally first. Yeah. I think somebody needs to read the application, the height of the building, the color of the trim, the color of the roof. Those are always questions like, what color is that? Yeah, what color, yeah. How high is it? And some things we we meant. Yeah. Um, so I think I remember John Hedden used to do it like before each application was. Uh, they yeah, out it was the, it was definitely a call out certain back details. Ten years ago, he would be, read right through the application: trim color, white. Just read to that be color. clear on the on the main thing, we be, height and the. But what you're supposed to be on the thing. Uh, yeah, you're supposed to be. We be adding yeah, a hat. Like we're looking at 20 applications. You can't remember the height of every application. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know yeah. about it. Yeah. It's like a 20 second no. exercise in the beginning of the, the application well, scale. But I, I, I'll wait. I'll come in after you. I recommend that we remember at the number of a beat. Staff. Be staff. <laughs> yeah, that was an open staff slash advisory. I was going to say that essentially what you have outlined here, Stephen, is, is the what? protocol that yeah. we, you know under normal circumstances we do follow. Yeah. Um, I think sticking to the time thing is huge. Yes. Do we have an idea of the amount of time we want to? Two minutes. Two minutes for everyone. Do you think that's realistic? I think it should be two minutes for the applicant's agent. Actually. I want to go back to a point you just made about previewing, and I just want to okay. touch on your comment. Mm -hmm. I, I think that we're going down a path. If we, I understand the sentiment, Carrie, and I, I'm, I'm sympathetic to it. But as commissioners, we need to review the applications prior to the meeting, and we're going to have tablets, and we can look at an application while the guys, you know, the guy or gal's agent is standing up, and we can review that for our own selves, and we can zoom in and out, and that's a full. That's a which full, tablet makes all the difference because yeah. the application will be That's right there. Yes. And it will be there because it, it will be there because it's on the checklist and we're not accepting a complete application. Right. Mm -hmm. So on that, I would suggest mm -hmm. what was the other point? Did you the time thing? Oh, the time thing. I was just going to suggest that um if you have something that's more than a minute, you didn't do your job in your application. Like we should be able to open an application and under frankly, I, I mean, I'm not going to suggest this as part of our procedure, at least not for another year. I, I think we open an application and you just state your concerns. We we don't need to have someone explain it to us. We're all well versed in what plans and drawings are and what the application materials are. We would we waste a significant amount of time having someone explain and frame the discussion and then the back and forth and then the back and forth back like forth. we I, i'm not suggesting we do that now i think we're gonna you know we're trying to get training wheels on again but I, I just think that the idea is with respect to time submit a full application have it be clear you have a minute to state the overview of the matters it should be plenty of time the abutters uh, and a butter would the first person would have maybe the first two, first three people have a minute and then everyone else has 30 seconds because look, and that's not to be unfair to people, but the first three people are going to say so much and we're going to have received letters and we're going to all have read the letters and then we're kind of hearing it again and again. And it it's not persuasive just because it keeps being said. It's As I said to Bruce Mandel when meeting, if it's a good idea, it's a good idea. 
if it's relevant, it's relevant. We're going to process it based on that. I would like to think. So I, I just before that, I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah. I think it would be two minutes to the abutters, maybe the first three each have a minute, and then it's 30 seconds after that. And it's all subject to don't be redundant. But I think there are projects that require more. And we can do that on we an have, individual basis. Yeah, we have full attitude here. This okay. is, these are, you know, like a housing project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Or oh, that's, that's, that's different. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. Do you want to okay. Um, Mary, do you want to? I'm sorry. This is real quick. Yeah, go. Mary Bergen is the preservation trust. This is great. I'm so excited about all these changes. <laughs> oh. um, but I think what Stephen's describing as far as uh, time limit, I think would, would, would be really helpful because it would make the neighbors talk to each other uh, and organize the point. Who's going to say what? So you don't have two people in the same house saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and I think that would be great you so, know yeah an example of that is the no oil thing yes we're basically i don't know how many people were in on that 30 people yeah and they had a spokesperson and i who delivered the tell message. any people who call us you know what should we do my neighbor's doing that neighbors working together mill mm -hmm. is an example the best example i think we've seen of what happens when you work with each other the lily pond you know how do you mm -hmm. organize and they achieve so much more working together yeah so mm -hmm. yeah thank you that's good Thanks. Um, I have one request. Sorry, I get you okay. Hillary. Okay. Hillary, if you can unmute. Thank you. Um, I am also so I'm so thankful for these suggestions and um I'm also very excited for the changes. I think it's going to be great for everybody. Um, I wanted to um encourage you to maybe phase in any kind of time limits. I think um, I know you want structure and that a schedule is your best friend, but one minute is a really, really short period of time. And I would hate to see it somehow achieve the opposite of what you're going for. Um, regarding neighbors, um, I think that people need to be able to come and participate in, I mean, this is taking the place of a public hearing. It's not a notice public hearing, but these are really important decisions for abutters. They affect their properties. Um, and to somehow f tell people that they have to talk to each other or they have to work as a team, I think that's a little bit beyond your purview. I mean, it would be ideal, but it can also, I've seen this happen um, at the planning board. It can also cause like a small group to take control of a conversation. Um, and then people think that their interests are being represented. And in fact, they're not. So um, or they they just never really get to express themselves. So I would. Um, consider those, I'd ask you to consider those two points. Thanks. Thank you for you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Hillary, would you mind, I didn't quite understand your last point. A um, small group controlling. My, my request was to allow neighbors to speak individually or organize if they want to at their discretion, because this is the one form that they have to be heard. Um, and I think it's, uh, really beyond i i just don't think it's appropriate to have you directing a neighborhood group how they can interact with you you're having the meeting there's time for public comment they can come and respectfully and intelligently present their points and i don't i wouldn't want to see you um tell them that they had to work as a group you could suggest it oh, but i've right. seen it kind of go the other way um because then some dominant people do all the like organizing and in fact they're they have different interests than other people and the other people okay, that, that in it. Oh, yeah. that's the point i wanted to understand is i didn't understand when you first said that so you're saying that people who are organized may come in and they may voice a concern but it's not consistent with the concern of this perhaps small or not well represented persons right. um personally just as the person who drafted this I don't necessarily have an, an, an issue. I think we should include a time limit. And I think that we should request as part of our protocol that, that the, well, state that we will not entertain redundant points. That is going to clear that up. Yeah. And then, you know. Don't say the same thing your neighbor just said. Yeah. I think the time allotment is more to give people, a, for me, it was more so people can structure their thoughts. It helps people to, before they come to the meeting, because there's some question whether these even are really public hearings, because that's not what our enabling act says. Um, you know, there there were meetings where you went in and you got talked to, and I'm not suggesting we do that, 
and that was it. Um, and no one spoke. Uh, I'm not again. I'm not suggesting that. I'm not trying to plan an anchor on on not having public hearings. I'm just saying that the reason I brought it up was because it gives people a time limit to focus on. So you, if you know you have your five minute coffee talk, you have your uh, one minute telephone interview, or you have your 30 second elevator pitch, you can work towards those goals using an uh, analogous type of a situation. And it is relevant because it's important not only that these people be heard, and they can always elaborate in a letter form, but it's important for other applications and other applicants to have timely processing of their applications. And the fact of the matter is, is how many are we getting a week now, roughly? 70. 70, 70 a week. On average. So that's the only reason I put the time in there. And I, I your points, Hillary, if I made through Mr. Chair, are well received. Mm -hmm. I think the no, uh, you know, requesting the, and and there be no redundancy is going to be the key. And I did have a, a question. Go ahead. Can we have a refresher on Robert's rule? Yeah, that's probably a good idea. How yeah. do you love to see that? The lawyers, John. Mm -hmm. Giovanni is going to do that for us. He that said that would be good. Yeah. He said he would do that for us, so we we knew Robert's rules and conflict of interest. I have Robert's rule information from our camp. I will send that to you all. Great. Okay. Thank you, uh, Abby. Did I see you? Do you have something you want to say? Well, I was going to say that that what we're talking about are specific things that are sort of contentious that we're talking about that we might need five minutes from the neighbors, or you know, it's not it's not you know these are special occasions where something comes up like it's on Main Street or something. Right, and we have the, we have the ability to waive. We, like the chair isn't doesn't have to say oh. Sorry, your right. one minute's up. I'm not suggesting anyone is saying that, but I just want to be clear. Like, there's no, I can't imagine a situation where we're operating and we have something like Two Stone Alley mm -hmm. and someone says, Oh, sorry, your minute's over. Stop. Yeah. yeah. But it's a tool that if someone is abusing the time, the chair, the vice chair, mm -hmm. and the commissioners can point to and say, Hey, look, I'm sorry, you're way past your time. It's not. Uh, can I? <clears throat> Can I ask a question too? Yes, Diane, go ahead. On the reverse, <clears throat> on the applicant, when they come in and they say their thingy, and then we get to speak, and then the people get to speak, the applicant should not continue to interrupt the conversation of the either the commissioners or the neighbors. Because that's, yeah, that's part of it. Yeah, yeah. That's part of it in here. I try my best, and then yeah, there are certain people that are. Well, yeah, I don't want to gavel exists. So I think part of the recommendation on this, if I can jump to that, is um, interestingly enough, we'll vote the protocol, we'll print and post the protocol, we'll bring copies of the protocol to meetings for reference and until yeah. it becomes integrated as standard yeah, practice. That's and, good. And it can be handed out to applicants where they're talking and it can be posted to people. We're going to be posting signs all over the room. Like, well, do, this, do that, don't do that, don't do that. Would you rather do what we're doing now? Yeah. Oh, that's right. I mean, I just, right. I, I don't want to be, uh, do, we wanna, do we want to endorse this uh, in concept and then talk about, uh, I'd ask some you, other point about the, the, the actual number of minutes or whatever. I would ask you to please adopt it with two minutes for the applicant, one minute for each of the first three of letters and um, cognizant of the fact that the chair has the ability to waive that. Yeah, if there's any, because otherwise we don't get this in place yeah, until they, they do that at the select board meeting. Mm -hmm. They say yeah. eight minutes. Yeah, and they, and they, they stick say, to it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and they just um, stick to it. They use their phone. Again, if you've got three minutes and you can't make your point, and it's, it doesn't have to be actually a long time. Yeah, it doesn't have to be, you know, it can be random selection or first person raise their hands. It doesn't have to be, you know, the, the idea isn't to quiet anyone in this process. Right. Just don't okay, forget the staff part. Hillary. Yeah, I got it. Uh, you're muted. muted. You're muted. Hi. Thank, thank you. 
Um, I wanted, this is probably for the future, but I know you, th these aren't public hearings, but the building with Nantucket in mind does say that for demolition, uh, there should be a public hearing. And I wondered if you might um, discuss that or give some thought to having a, a notice public hearing for demolition. Um, number 14 is best practices with respect to demolitions Ooh. and um, 15 <laughs> is with respect to contributing and significant structures. So that's something we have. Future, no, I didn't bring, I didn't want to. Oh. Oh. All right. All right. Um, thanks, Hillary. Uh, are we ready to adopt Item number two. Yeah, I'll make that motion. Okay, was there any change in the language? I'm yeah, I do want, I'll reread. Um, so we're going to clarify it's two minutes for the applicant or mm -hmm. agent uh, total. Yeah. A minute for the first three of butters. The other butters can speak along the same lines. Um, staff will be added uh, to B. Um, well, actually, staff will be added as the new C, and C will be re lettered D and D will be re-lettered E. Staff gets 10 minutes. Staff 10 yeah. minutes. Staff <laughs> time limit. Um, um, I'm trying to idea. It's the same as possible. No, no, we're a no. little good natured grass. <laughs> um, amongst friends is always welcome. Number five, it will be add um, to a strongly discourage redundant comments. Yeah. I and think you can post this someplace too. Yeah, like the website, and we'll post this under the action items. Is the last page on the agenda? Well, it says print and post the protocol, so we can do that. Can that oh, perfect. Yeah, just put a page on the back of the agenda. It's hard to say that that's my motion, but that's my motion. There is the motion. Abby has made the motion. On the motion, Diane. Aye. Thank you, Val. Aye. Thank you, Stephen. Aye. And Abby on the motion. Right. And I'm in favor. Thank you for okay. indulging the OFC in these matters. That's great. Now, thank uh, you, Bill. One, one, one last little tidying up thing. Is there any action that we need to take on this very last general comment? I mean, or is it just understood as been listed? Yeah, I was just, it's kind of the overarching aspect of this is that, again, just for the people in the audience, with respect to each of the foregoing the commission upon a public vote in favor may, when consistent with the spirit and intent, of the respective initiative waive strict conformance. Okay. So it's just how we operate anyway. We'll keep that in our best pocket. Yeah. All right. Great. Um, Stephen, thanks a million for that. I think that those were all wonderful. And there are more to come. Oh, yeah. Um, but so at least this is a start. Oh, I want to point out, I'm just realizing this, and for the uh, purpose of full disclosure, um, not all of these made it to the agenda, um, and that is an error on my part. So our votes today will need to be, I think, for the sake of it, yeah, we'll ratify. I'll, okay. I'll provide you the additional two uh, okay. as many that yeah, we can ratify later. The twenty-nine. Are you going? To, are you going to do my discussion of my letter? Oh, so yeah. Um, I don't know what time it is, but we're over. Oh, shoot, 250. Okay. Um, so, uh, guys, what do we think? Is this going to be a, a protracted discussion or a short I, discussion? I can't imagine. No, it's, it's going to be a very short discussion, but I need to get, I need to say what happened and I need to get you to, to agree with me. That's what otherwise. When you say what happened, what does that actually mean? Oh, because every time we have a letter that needs a vote, I am asked to send that letter to the staff. They, every letter I have written has been sent to the staff and they have it. The staff does not do the same thing. They should notify us as the commissioners that if they are writing a letter, they they wrote a letter last night, which I knew nothing about okay. until five, could I just finish? I didn't yeah. know anything about it until five minutes before the meeting. So- Diane, I, I have to confess that I, I actually don't know what you're referring to. 
Um, there was a meeting it, last night. Something that's the, been noticed. I mean, she's I referring to a memo that I had to the select board regarding the HTC advisory board, which is not on your agenda today. So. Okay, so we need Diane. We need to take that particular thing up at a different time because it's not actually part of what has been noticed. What I have down is discussion and vote of Diane's letter, and I yes. kind of need to be brought up to speed on that. This was a letter that uh, that we have the, uh, trying to put in. It's my letter. It is the board voted on it that we uh, asked for the reappointment of the advisory boards. That was the letter. That was the letter I sent to them. That was the letter that I sent to the staff at your request. That's However, that. what I am saying, and it is related to this the staff did not write a letter to us that I had no idea that they were having a letter go to to the select board previous to mine yeah okay D Diane um I'm trying to get my I'm asked, around this but it I'm sounds talking like about it. it sounds like there's two I would like yes I Diane? want the staff. Yes. Somebody else could do the goddamn thing. I'm, so, I'm just trying to understand uh, what's going on, uh, honestly. I is asking for a very simple thing that we are required, the board, the commissioners are required to notify the staff of any letter that comes to us as a meeting which we had for a vote. We had a meeting about the advisory board and everybody voted to, to do it. I wrote the letter, I read it two weeks ago. You said send a copy of it to the staff, which I did. But I want, if I am, if we, the commissioners of this HDC have to submit to the staff uh, the letter that's being written, then I just think that the staff should notify the commissioners so we don't walk in and something is done. That's what All I'm right. trying to say. Very simple. Okay. Uh, Diane, that's two ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think. Sorry. Abby, Sorry. one second. Yeah. Holly. Yes. Yeah. Uh, she's referring to the, the select board, is what she's referring to, which is not, again, what's on the agenda. Today, the agenda is her letter, which is the letter that um, was forwarded after she sent it to staff, and it was forwarded, which is available right there on the screen. Okay, so thank, that's what we're. Thank you for that, there. and and Abby. So what I, do you have to share? All right, so um, so there was Diane's letter, and then last night there was the select board meeting, and a letter came up that that staff had written about, or sorry, Holly had written. And I think that is what Diane is referring to, that letter that, that about, and that, that was about um, advisory boards That's or- it, Yes, it was yeah. giving a- so, so I think Diane's point is that she wishes that, that the um, HDC board had got that letter. I think that's what you're saying, Diane. Is, is that correct? Yes, I'm asking for the same thing that we have to do that the, that the staff has to do with us. Our letter went in asking us to reestablish the, the advisory boards. This is what we all talked about. We voted on, I'm not making it up. And the letter from the staff said no, that they didn't want the advisory boards. Right, and what Diane, what our chairman is saying is yeah. that that you're welcome to bring up that topic, but we can't actually discuss it because it isn't publicly noticed. Your letter is, but your well, that's what I. But it all has to do with the same thing. No, 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 no Diane, yeah. Diane, they're 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 separate. Yeah. They're definitely separate issues because. Well, then I would. What you're discussing everybody... is something that took place last night, so it couldn't possibly have been noticed for us today. Um, so that, I think, has to seriously be off the table. It, 
Uh, well, it was noticed because it was said. No, it couldn't have been because the, the, the notification took place before the meeting took place last night. Uh, but um, I so. knew the meeting. I would called up the select board and knew last week that my letter was going to be on the select board meeting last night. Wait, we're not Jane, we're not talking about your letter. I just want to clarify if I may, Mr. Chair. We're talking about the staff letter and discussion of the staff letter. We understand they're related, but the dis with to your letter, but the discussion that you want to have about the staff letter needs to be noticed. So we're not in violation of open meeting law. Thank you. Oh, well, very good. Can I notice it and have it on the Tuesday, the 29th of of November on the discussion. I don't disagree that we should know exactly. I, I guys, we I don't mean to be a but we got yeah, this is part of the thing we just, just asking to put it on the agenda. Okay, I understand that, but Al is talking about it. So please let me finish. If we can't be giving our comments on it, we're entering deliberation. No offense to anyone. I understand. Stephen is right. So with regard I am formally I am formally asking for this to be on the November 29th meeting of Tuesday. Uh, I want to make sure that everyone, that everyone, knows. everyone, everyone uh, I want to make sure that everyone knows what this in quotes is. And this would be a discussion, uh, a board discussion about notification to, let me make sure I get the, this language right. Notification to board members about letters that staff have submitted is that what we did that sum it up pretty well and in yes. particular the one that was at select okay letters. including the letter that was submitted by staff to sb for whatever last night's meeting was and as opposed to having that topic right. track diane's letter can i suggest i have to leave i'm sorry and i would um that we as opposed to having them track and we just bring up discuss Diane's letter and the new topic all together since they're similar and I related. think it's great. Next yes. on the 29th. Okay, I'll make yes. that motion. Well, I don't think we need to make a motion. I, I can just do that unilaterally. Well, just that it's on. No, well, let's be good it, about it. It will be on the agenda. It will be okay. on the agenda. It, it, Diane, it is, it, is, it is going to be on the agenda. Thank you. Okay, listen, everybody, thanks. Hey, and what is your application, by the way? Oh, it's a lovely sponsor. It's a shed. Mm -hmm. um, I'll put it on this. That's easy. Okay. Yeah, well, well, we need a motion to adjourn. Yeah. Um, we don't have to do anything else today. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, John Walton has made a motion to adjourn. On John's motion, Val. Aye. Abby. Aye. Diane. Aye. John, I motion. I and uh, Rachel, thank you, everybody.